Hello and welcome to Kaido. With me, Andrea D'Souza, your host for this show. A term very common in Goa and in Goan culture is Bhatkar and Munkar. We all have heard this. Put simply, it means a person who owns the property, that is the Bhatkar, and a person who lives on that property, the Munkar, in the past in lieu of services provided. This mutual relationship has been here for so long that it also has an act, the Munkar's Protection from Evacuation Act and Rules, which was formed in the year 1975. Today, let us talk more about this act. What is this relationship between Badkar and Munkar? It's an old relationship, but what is the relationship today? What can a Munkar expect under this act? What are his rights? What can he expect? What can he do? Let's talk about all these different things. And today we have with us Advocate Harsha Naik. She has been practicing law for the past 16 years and is a legal aid advocate. She was the ex-president of North Goa Consumer Redressal Forum. She was the ex-member of Child Welfare Committee, North Goa, Apnagar. She was the ex-president of JCI, Santinese. Also, the ex retainer of the mediation center in Panjim. Yes. Welcome, Harsha Naik. Yes, thank you. So, yeah, as you know, we are talking about the Munkar, that is the Munkar Protection from Evacuation Act and Rules. The name itself is pretty clear. We know what we are talking about. You know, they are rights against being evacuated from the place that they live in. But to put it simply, what does this act talk about? And what is the history behind this, enacting this act? Actually, I would say, like, I mean, this is a really. Uh, a wonderful act mm. especially for the munkas ah. and also at the same time for the bhatkas also okay. or the landlords okay now this act mainly mm. the you can say like you know this is a um, goa daman and diu mm. i will just uh, elaborate mm. in the act how it is spelled okay. out like goa daman and diu mm. uh, munkar like mm. protection from eviction act mm. Mm. it's a 1975 okay. it was enacted in, in the year 1975 okay uh, and th there are also rules which are being mm. framed, mm. which came later on, subsequently mm. I think two years, like 1977. Okay. But due to certain changes, certain amendments mm. and all that, because for every act there mm. has to be a, there need, I mean, compulsion is that there has to be a rule. Of course, true. So, yeah. without the rules, you can't function. True. It's like that. Even true. if there is an act, uh -huh. but there are no rules, it is very difficult to implement that act. True. So, for even for this act, being uh -huh. a Goan act, mm. exclusive for the state of Goa, mm. this act was enacted. And the and Daman and Diu. Yes, assume. Goa yes, Daman and Diu. Actually, it is yes. like you know, it was it was extended not only to Goa, to Daman even and Daman and at that point of time, okay. means even after the Goa and independence, mm. like you know, mm. after 1961, this mm. act came into force. Okay. Now, mainly the the what you can say the importance and the of this act, mm. you can mm. I would rather say like it is you know all the acts, especially mm. the Goan acts, mm. uh, the acts which are being applicable for mm. the state of Goa, you know, these are all beneficial legislations. Mm. The name itself speaks like beneficial legislation. Legislation so in the act. Beneficial the for someone. For, the, for someone. Yes. Now, who are these someone? Huh. So, these were the benefit or the beneficial uh, beneficiary, mm. I would mm. rather mm. say. They were the Munkas. Okay. Fine. Okay. And the act itself is very clear. Mm. Once you read the act, it is like, you know, see the uh, act, mm. like, you know, protection from eviction. Actually, mm. it is an eviction mm. thing. Mm. Okay. That means. You are being protected. Who is mm. being protected? The Munkar is being protected okay. from what? From eviction. Okay. That fine. means the landlord, so called, mm. or the Bhatka, so mm. called, they can't evict mm. uh, very easily this okay. Munkas. Okay. It is, to, I mean, for only for the Munkas. You can't just evict them when you want or when you like or when you dislike. Okay. And probably that's because the Munkas have been living yes. here. There are cases wherein there are be, they have been living there for generations. Generations. Like, you know, and fathers, it's almost like it's their house. Answers. Of course. It has been, you can't so, just yes. throw so them out. So before we go ahead, let's uh, let's define as per the act. Hmm. What is the definition of a Bhatkar and a Munkar hmm. as per the act? And the simple thing, you hmm. know, the pe because the people has to understand. Hmm. Uh, like I won't, I won't quote the provisions hmm. or hmm. the sections. Hmm. Because hmm. it becomes very hmm. difficult when someone tries to, especially for the lay person, hmm. Hmm. because most the munkas who are mm. today who are coming before the authorities mm. or who are approaching the authorities mm. for their rights mm. they are the ones like who are mostly i would rather say like you know 70 to 80 percent they are illiterate people true true fine so we mm. have to make it very simple ah. simpler thing or clear things mm. or there has to be mm. like they should know what mm. it is mm. actually uh, now uh, the act specifies or the act defines like you know the munkar mm. munkar means a person who is residing with the consent of the bhatkar okay there are Two, three things, uh -huh. consent. Mm. That means I am, uh, you know, I am taking the permission. Consent mm. itself means it's a permission True. from the Bhatkar or mm. the landlord mm. whose 
on whose land mm. my dwelling house is there okay this is a very you know so not land, it is not just a house ha huh. the munkar acts it is not house mm. it has to be a dwelling house i have to dwell in that house because Then that's only how i can claim you had a badkar who would yes. have a lot of property yes. and he would have people as caretakers to live in the house on that property to take care yes. of the property but that is a different aspect ha huh. caretaker is a different huh. thing and the munkar is a different true, thing true true i'm just yes. using yes. yes yeah the uh, we are strictly the munkar act will speak mm. only about the dwelling house okay not other things or other property or the other okay. land only okay. the dwelling house like so the dwelling okay. house that belongs on the land where the whether munkar is residing a person mm. is residing mm. in the house mm. in the dwelling house mm. on that land which belongs to bhatkar with the consent of the bhatkar okay ha huh, fine become. fair enough there are certain things like not only the consent mm. but he has to live in certain you know fixed you can say fixed habitation these are the words legal words which mm. are being used mm. under the act mm. i have to reside in the fixed habitation mm. for example at least for a continuous period of 2 years okay continuous period okay for example suppose i am living only for one mm. year then i am not there i have changed my residence you know somewhere else mm. like mm. or you know so there is a, a gap of uh, one year to that means i am i cannot claim the munkarship provided because i have already discontinued the thing okay so for claiming that thing i have to reside there continuously okay. uh, for certain years huh. that act specifies okay. then only i can claim the munkarship okay it's like that So oh. these are the certain things which I have means minutely one has to observe, one has to notice, mm. and one has to uh, you know if one wants to uh, you can say file certain things before the certain authority. I will mm. come to mm. you. Mm. Which are these authorities mm. also? Mm. Then only I can claim the munkarship right. Otherwise, okay. no. Okay. And who would be a badkar in this case? Badkar is the person who whose land it belongs to or who owns the land. Whose land it? Suppose it is, there is a A property. Mm. Okay. Mm. Now it the A property it belongs to one person. Mm. And in that there are four five houses. Mm. Now those four five houses are of whom? Now they are the munkars mm. dwelling houses. Mm. Dwelling houses on whose land that belongs. So it belongs to a badkar. Okay. Okay. All right. So now as we were talking. Munkars have a right to the house that they live in, as per yes. this act. Yes. Now, what about the property around that house, or say, you know, a lane around that house and things like? That? Do they also have a right to that area around the house, now like the what we would like to term say as a garden, for instance? Mm -hmm, yeah. Of course. Now, even if you see, like nowadays, mm -hmm. even uh, if you notice, like you know, all old houses mm -hmm. and all, like if you mm -hmm. go to uh, certain those village or the mm -hmm. village mm -hmm. areas, specif uh, especially the village areas. Ha. I'm not talking about mm -hmm. the municipality mm -hmm. uh, areas. Uh, because we can file, we can claim the munkar uh, ship uh, uh, of village thing, as well as the municipal thing. Okay. Both the things are uh, applicable. So basically, wherever it so might wherever. fall in a village, that is, Haan. it might come under a panchayat so or it might come under municipality. municipality. True. If you go to see the villages, you mm. know, you will find, you know, there are gardens in front, or there are gardens, you know, from backside, Haan. or you know, there are some uh, like sheds which are being, uh, you know, like True. for storing certain materials, True. like or the wood. They, initially, True. the people they used to store some wood, you know, in those the things, outhouse or the cow course, sheds, yeah. or you know, all those mm. things, mm. small, small, like you know, like uh, we call kacha structures Haan. and all, like you know. they were there from the ancestors like but still the question comes like whether the person who is uh, claiming to be munkar mm. has a right over this things or not mm. whether mm. he can fight mm. for it mm. because he is in possession the main ingredient is like you have to be in possession of that thing or you, because you have actually physical uh, you are residing in that mm. house mm. along with the area which is surrounding that mm. suppose i want to file a munkar thing like you know the question comes how much i mean what is the area where i can how much i can claim for so basically the house and the area and the area appurtenant like we so can say the area, area are we talking about for example here. if it is a panchayat mm, area mm. Yeah, suppose your house falls in the panchayat jurisdiction yes. or the local authorities like panchayat jurisdiction then i can claim for 300 square meters around the or house. okay including the dwelling house or 5 meters you know dwelling house or 5 meters so or the 300 oh. whichever is more Okay, so wait. Uh, let me get this clear. Either your dwelling house or five or the meters area around it, around surrounding it, or three hundred meters, meters including, including the dwelling, dwelling house. house. Yes. Okay. Whichever is more. Okay. There is no like you know that. Uh, see, you can't when you're filing meters. certain huh. things, you can't opt for both. No, of course not. Of course. It will it will be dismissed. Yeah. That also I'm telling. And it's and it's clear. beneficial for the it's Munkars a beneficial itself thing. because it's whichever is more. So whichever you choose more. whichever is more, and then so you. So there are certain instances or certain cases like you know where you. you know actually they only you get a front side but you don't get the back side mm. or you tend to get only the two sides but mm. the other two sides you don't get 
Okay. So here also the question, you know, there are uh, cases, uh, uh -huh. uh, you know, many cases are there where you don't get the actual 300 square meters. Okay. Or the actual five uh, square meters or uh -huh. five meters, uh -huh. sorry, uh, you don't get it. Uh -huh. So there, you know, it is a mutual understanding. That okay. also, like you know, I'm making it clear, mutual understanding between the Bhatkar and the Munkar. And the Bhatkar. Yes. Okay. If the Bhatkar agrees to that, you yeah. know, so Bhatkar says, no, okay, I will give you the certain areas, mm. provided there are no other Munkas surrounding you. Because if there are other Munkas also, they are again, they will You're fight. infringing on so their So, they will create more course. problems, like, okay. True. So, if there are no Munkas, mm. then it is something it is helpful, like, for the uh, Munkar, present okay. Munkar, who, are, who is claiming. Okay. Provided it now, is like for the Bhatkar to decide. to a municipality region, what would be the area in the municipality? If it is like you know uh, 200, okay. 200 square meters, there is mm. a difference like 300, mm. it comes to municipality 200 mm. or 2 meters, whichever. So here there is slightly thing which is uh, less. Uh, it, is guess, lesser, yeah, it is less because we can un understand yeah. a municipality is because a more the, developed region, uh, the land available there would be lesser, yes. so fair enough. Yes. So these okay. are the criteria which are being given. Okay. I mean, the acts uh, uh, prescribes this criteria or these areas. Okay. okay. And it is not like you have to uh, opt for one, mm. and it has to be uh, like you know final. Like you of can't. Of course, say. you can't uh, shift. Uh, yeah, that it's is like true. that. Okay. That is true. So this now is coming. The thing. Now coming to this, there was a question actually put forth by our viewers. Hmm. Uh, what he asked us was, say you have a munkar and he has his own property now he wants to buy some extra property from the badkar hmm. okay hmm. so is there any nominal rate that he has to pay as per the act or is it the normal going rate hmm. that we have in the market today so what rate does he have to pay for that extra property extra. that he wants to now buy? as far as uh, this the hmm. dwelling house and hmm. as per under the munkar hmm. act there are certain area i mean the or we can say the market uh, the rate which mm. has been prescribed that is, that is a strat, uh, static stage mm. I, I would uh, come to that and this uh, these rates are being you know you will get it in the concerned mamleda's office and all like mm. these mm. rates you know all area wise rates are being prescribed mm. so for example like you know uh, for chimbel or for uh, uh, the you can say meses or mm. for taligaon you know mm. or for all which are coming in the tiswadi jurisdiction mm. uh, panchayat where the panchayat areas mm. like you know these rates are being prescribed and this if you anyone wants to know the rate mm. he or she can just so, approach so do they have different rates as per the munkar act no so for example like you know there are certain areas which say like you know 20 square meters uh -huh. 20 uh, per square meter 20 rupees okay then other things they may be like 15 uh -huh. i'm talking about the act because uh, yes, the act the will be act, nominal. nominal things. Oh. Now, suppose if I want to, so my, my 300 is very clear, I am getting the 300, but suppose if I want to, uh, you know, buy mm. or mm. purchase mm. additional uh, plot or additional like area, yes, okay. I think the question which has been asked yeah. by this people, like, then what is the thing, what means whether I will get that same nominal, I can yes. know, oh. I can't opt under that nominal rate. Because here the market value will, uh, it, it depends upon the market value the as of now, okay. the present rate, the going rate or it may be like the uh, Bhatkar or the Munkar, if there is a understanding between the Bhatkar and so the Munkar. So that is their the private understanding, that is the thing. but if the can, act doesn't no, cover No, it. you can't uh, uh, oh. take the benefit of this act for buying the additional areas which is not coming under the Munkar act. So the Munkar Act specifically talks about your dwelling house yes. and that little land yes. around it. Yes. Okay. And now coming to the dwelling house also. Hmm. Say I've been. Say you have a Munkar who has been living in the house for the past 20, 20 years or probably four, two, three generations hmm. also. Hmm. Okay. Does that itself and the fact that they have say uh, you know some evidence and all does that itself guarantee them munkar ship or do they need to actually go and buy the property from the Bhatkar? Mm -hmm. How does that work? Now this is an interesting question mm -hmm. because most of the I think munkars are the people like Because who a person would like say okay I'm a munkar ah. I've been living here for a long time yes. I don't need to go and do yes. anything else. No. You know that's yes. what people yes, think. Yes. Not, yes. not think this is an experience like what I have experienced okay. especially like you know from the people even now some people they, they don't know that they have to do certain certain things or okay. they have to comply with the provisions of, of uh, act. They will say, oh, we have been living here for yes. so many generations. Who will, who will uh, throw me out or yes. who will evict me? Very true. So, these are the questions which are still there coming, you know, then they become so, sometimes because, you know, they can't expect mm. such things like, you know, that a person okay. who is coming suddenly and, you know, this is, uh, you, you you are not a munkar, you have not claimed munkarship, you have not obtained any order. And that would be just, eviction just, uh, at throw, the end You just go day. out or I am just uh, throwing you out or I am just evicting you out. True. So, these are the, even, these are happening. Okay. This are happening. This is of course I can imagine, and that's yes. the reason actually because it is true. We yes. do see it around us. But 
let's wait for the answer to this yes. see you on the other side of the break as we discuss about if you are a munkar do you have to really do some procedure or something like that to get the title of a munkar do you have to buy the property or is it just because you've been living there for a long time it's done that's your land see you on the other side of the break this is info media prime slot network and you're watching prime your voice your channel Hello and welcome to yet another episode of Kaido with me Andrea de Souza your host for this show. Today we are talking about a very interesting act. Which act? Well, it's the Munkas Protection from Evacuation Act and Rules which was laid down in the year 1975 and we have with us advocate Arsha Naik. So as we were discussing before we left for the short break, who is a munkar? does just by living in that area for a very long time can you call yourself a munkar do you have to produce some proof some documents or do you have to buy the land from the badkar how exactly does this work but before that let's go to the base question who exactly is a munkar what are the categories for that yes i think actually i should have uh, covered, covered that this, initially yeah, but initially. okay uh, uh, because m these are the things which one uh, each one as a citizen mm. one has to know mm. about this thing true because uh, whether who can be a who can claim the munkarship mm. mm. a member mm. of the family like you know it is it can be a joint hindu family true okay uh, you can say a spouse mm. suppose uh, the main person is uh, no more is mm. expired yes so the spouse okay son okay uh, unmarried daughter and so i've heard married daughter yes yes i've heard widow daughter okay you know these are the things you know, today what happens you know any person can fights for it like you know even a daughter who is married sometimes they also fight for the munkarship and i've actually read an article on the paper which says that that is unbiased because yes, when we come course. to our you know like equality gender equality huh. and things like it's pretty unbiased yes. but let's not get into no, that no i'm okay. not saying but these yeah. are the things but okay, that one only, has to be only aware an of unmarried daughter or a yes, widow daughter married okay okay Uh, because one should not take the uh, you can say advantage of you know certain things like okay, of course no doubt you are residing there or whatever mm. but you should have you know you just comply with the act comply true, with the provisions true. you okay. are married you are gone or uh, you know there are instances there are cases like, you know people are fighting for it to claim the munkarship of the houses enough. which is not fair which is as per the act illegal. probably and the act says it's not allowed yes, and they yes. do it fair then these are the main things which one has to know like okay, okay. and the joint hindu uh, like initially we used to have that concept of uh, hindu undivided family mm. you know like mm. where there were many people uh, like in each house is to you will get 10 to 15 members who True. are residing and all like you know so all were all can claim the munkarship now you okay. will find that those things are no more like yes the okay. whole trend of it is decreasing you have the main house original house which is a dwelling house and all people were residing over there but now the things have you know they have getting separ mm. isolated mm. separated like you know True. some most of them they are living separately True. but the the instances and the cases and the experiences which for mm. me like it is like even people who are they are fighting even for their own uh, the original munkarel house even though they are staying in their separate they have their separate house independent so, house so what if uh, there is a situation wherein you have the original house yes. the munkari yes. house as you said yes. the person is not living there anymore yeah. can as they as fight no as it? i said you have to live with the fixed habitation suppose your entire thing is shifting over in the new house your voting card your aadhar card your ration card oh. your all the documentary thing has been shifted to this house okay. and once upon a time you were no one but you can't claim Currently because you were not you residing aren't. you are not residing with the fixed habitation the okay. main criteria as i again i am coming fixed back to habitation. that fixed habitation continuous okay. you have to reside, you have to take care of that house it is not only the residing thing you have to maintain your house you have to repair these are the it's like your place of dwelling of course, if it is it your is, place of dwelling it is not just then question you can't no no it is oh. i am i was born in that house or no i was once upon a time i was in that house but you are not fulfilling the other criteria which True. are being laid down on that yes now coming back to the question yes. okay so are there any procedures that yes. one has to go yes. through to actually call himself not or to be make it very simple like in short like you know the procedure mm. suppose if i want to file a munkar mm. thing mm. the main thing is like you know i have to approach the authorities and the mm. authority is the mamladar okay there are mamladar there are joint mamladars you know these are the authorities yes, which yes. are been prescribed under the act mm. to entertain this applications if i want to claim the munkarship munkar act says like you know initially mm. uh, you know there were then subsequent there were mm. certain sort of amendments mm. initially like you know uh, there were only registration there was a concept section 20 there is one section 29 mm. you know, uh you know registration mm. you, i can claim only the registration once i am declared as a i am registered as a munkar fine okay. this was the okay. uh, you know like initial yeah. stage of like okay 50% i have done my job like under the act 
so most of the Haan. people you know all those ancestors assume uh, old, that only that much old, was you know, required you know generation Haan. and of uh, i'm talking about 70s and 80s like you know true, those true. people they Haan. used to only take that uh, you know registration orders from the uh, orders from the mamledar and that time only one mamledar was there e- even in uh, now you will find four five mamledars but that true. point of time only one mamledar was there and these people used to take the orders mm. only from that mamledar mm. and uh, the we, uh, the person used to be uh, registered as a munkar so that mm. was more than sufficient thing like you know mm. okay something mm. i have with me like that order yeah there were recent, there subsequent there were amendments mm. and later on it was realized that registration is not sufficient but you have to uh, get or obtain the declaration order from the mamledar again mamledar only okay. but declaration okay. this was the main thing okay. so again you know that the people who are even now huh. even now the people who have obtained the declaration mm. mm. now they have to file a fresh the case before the or application before the mamledar mm. for getting themselves declared this okay. is under the act the act okay. specifies and it. this would be for a village or for a city yes yes okay. you have to get a declaration from a mamledar yes. already so registration already. concept now it has been like you know thrown away like okay. you have to get a declaration not only declaration mm. as a declaration is just 50% of mm. your mm. job under mm. the act mm. Uh, so uh, subsequent to that you have suppose if you want to claim suppose uh, see th- there is a uh, thing called form 1 and 14 mm. yes, okay yes yes yeah. oh, that is a record of rights yes. and then in that form 1 and 14 the name of mun- uh, name of occupants are mm. that clause is mm. there one mm. column then name of other rights mm. in the other rights column these all the names who can f- uh, file for munkar their names are reflecting Okay. Okay, because okay. form one and fourteen also gives there are many names which are reflecting mm. under the mm. other rights columns. Mm. For that, that person not only has declaration, but he has to, he or she has also has to file a application to purchase that dwelling house along with the whatever the area is there. Okay. Then only she can he or she can become the so called uh, uh, owner. I mean, he gets that title. He or she gets that title, and uh-huh. only after you know there are certain procedure after buying that there is a, a thing called certificate. You have mm. to obtain some purchase certificate then after. after that sanad we call Haan. it as like and then after that you have to enter your name if you want to enter your name in the occupants okay. column of form 114 you have to file a separate proceedings like so all these things are the requirements so, for entering your name under form 1 and 14 and to uh, claim you can to get a title of owner, owner. or as an occupant okay so basically just by the fact that you've been living there no, for a long time you can't sufficient. become a munkar you need to do this declaration yes. and then get the form 1 yes. and 14 and different purchase. things like after that. purchase only your name will be and purchase sh- the property yes main thing is purchase now uh, again do the property rates go as per the current no. going rates which no. is very under expensive under the act and earlier also have specified under huh. the act if you are applied under the act and that area for that property only under the munkar rate which is which is nominal the statistics which is uh, uh, readily available for any person you can he she can oh. Okay. Prasam Munkar, you will okay. get the thing. Other than that uh, ah. area, def- I mean, he can okay. approach the concerned landlord for that whatever the rate. Okay. Now, understanding this, the next question is: Can a badkar refuse a munkar selling the land to him, or can a badkar, ev- you know, just evict evict the munkar? Yes, badkar can evict. And there are actually the act itself. You can't. Pr- it's a protection for the munkar yes. for getting evicted. Yes. But there are certain instances mm. where it is not only favoring the munkar, but mm. there are certain this act beneficial legislation. It has given something for both. For I both assume also. it's just. Uh, the thing is like uh, these rights. You know, munkarial mm. rights are heritable. These are not transferable. Yes. Yes. Suppose if my father dies. Then my mo- mom is and uh, can claim the munkarship. Children can claim. Mm. So this it goes like hereditary, like what you say. So But God I forbid the transfer it. Stops I can't there, transfer. You cannot transfer to I someone. I can't transfer. Else. True. To. True. Fine. So being the heritable rights, you know, uh, we have to know like all these things. Now your question was like, um, uh, what was the thing? Can a uh, can a badkar actually refuse uh, selling so the property? To suppose badkar comes to know that no, I have transferred this right to someone else. Mm. Yes. You, I mean, he or she, he can. Then it's infringement it. of yes. the entire. Or if the okay. suppose if you are not residing with the fixed habitation. Oh, okay. Then. So only if you are violating parts yes. of this right, the can a badkar refuse to sell it? What are you? the criteria for munkar? If those criteria are not complying, then definitely okay. I can be evicted. Okay. But there cannot be forcible uh, eviction. One thing I'm that also I'm making it very clear. For uh, as per the act only, you have to do it, and there is time frame li- uh, given for the badkas to mm. file certain things mm. for eviction. There are forms. Mm. You know, if you go to see the rules things mm. after the rules of this, you know, mm. there are s- the formats of all the forms which are being given. Okay. You know, the the formats. I would okay. rather say the how the badkar has to file, even how the munkar has to file those things. Okay. Even badkar cannot wrongfully or dispossess the munkar uh, forcibly. Or but giving threats, 
No, he no. can't do that. We also. need to do it as per as per the, the act. But there are okay. certain cases which nowadays which are going even the bhatkas are for forcibly they are trying to evict. Mm. They are trying to dispose the munkar by using whatever the force or the pressures or the things. Mm. But this is not so proper, exactly. And it is so illegal. It's illegal. Yes. So coming back to your main question now, the bhatka knows that you need to purchase the land from him. Mm. Can the bhatka say no? I'm not going to purchase it to you. No, because then if you have proof showing that you are the munkar. Probably your case would be no, that strong. No, sometimes it is like not a thing. Sometimes huh. like uh, even if there are no proofs, is even huh. assuming I don't have my ID card, uh, voting okay. card, I okay. don't have my ration card, huh. I don't have my any other thing. Huh. But still, I am residing there in the fixed habitation. So that is Some proof enough. Of course. It's oh. proof not only that huh. i can create the proof by you know make, making help or taking help of some people who can be witnesses in my case mm. who can be witness who say that no i am residing this person was residing there or she or she was residing i know since both the, the person even has a, uh, i mean sure. he is born in that house no doubt he may be illiterate he is not having any documents there are instances which are taken because there are cases and there are they, this munka also having they, they are being just thrown away Okay. Which okay. is illegal on the part of the. Now you know, talking about illegalities, there's another issue here. Badkars tend to uh, not to really generalize anything, but there are situations wherein the badkar has tried to say stop electricity to the munkar's no. house, stop water no. supply yes. to the there house. There are several no, there instances. Are, there are, there are, instances. are several instances. So is that allowed? No. You know there are rights which uh, this act speaks about various rights of the munkar. Mm. Mm. As a munkar, I have a right to repair my house. I have a right to reconstruct, right to rebuild, right mm. to uh, take care, right to maintain my house. Mm. And in that, badkar cannot. Maximum badkar can say, okay, you do it, provided you are doing it within the plinth area, within that okay. area which has been prescribed. Oh. But badkar cannot say no. One thing, yes. So ah. these are the even the right to you can say you know every, all these rights. Mm. I suppose water, right to water, right mm. to electricity, right to. These are the rights which have been given, and Bhatkar cannot just uh, take over these rights. If okay. these rights are being taken away forcibly, then as a Munkar, I can file the proper things before the Mamledar. I can obtain certain orders okay. against the Bhatkar, Haan. so that I am being protected. Okay. And now, when it comes to business, yes. okay, there are many people, you know, people, artisans, and all they conduct business in their house of residence. Yes. But it's commercial use also of this house because you are conducting business there. Hmm. So, is it allowed under this act? To a certain extent, I am not saying the business. There are some uh, various categories hmm. of business. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know the acts also specify certain categories. Like, mm -hmm. for example, like you know, I can suppose the skilled labors mm -hmm. or something like we we do with artisans mm -hmm. or some you know uh, horti thing, horticulture. So like I can uh, you know create some uh, grow something fruits or the vegetables mm -hmm. or you know no, those type of uh, to a certain extent I can do. But provided I have to comply with the uh, you can the pro again coming to the provisions of that I can just can't just do anything in the house okay. or I like you can't start a huge yeah, industry. No, I there, have but something small. Yes, or I have to inform. Certain authorities or the local authorities. Okay, okay. but I am doing these things. Like. Okay. So okay. these are the things. And even for all these rights, uh -huh. no, I can't. Uh, it is not mandated. I have to obtain the NOC from the Badkar. It is oh. nothing like that. So because it is, you are doing within the plain area. Okay. Maximum thing is like you have to inform the certain uh, the panchayat that okay, this my yeah, house I mean is, the getting, is, is being about carried. to demol is getting demolition now because the rainy season is also approaching. So okay. And those and in most of the cases, you know, during uh, prior to rainy season, the most of the munkas are facing these problems mm. because sometimes the badka they don't allow them to even to repair. Even they know so that. So under they are this act, a munkar can repair. Yeah, their of house. course. And he or she has a right, and he or she can definitely take help of this. Even the even if the badka and munkar is try to create problem. For Person. Okay, I think we actually chose a nice time <laughs> to do it because, as you said, before uh, the yes, rains, and this would be an issue yes, for people. Yes. You know, you want to repair your house, yes. do the tiles, and different things like that. Yes. Thank you so much, Harsha Naik, Welcome. for being with us <laughs> here and actually telling us more about this act because it's a very valuable act in Goa. Badkar, Munkar are two terms. We hear a lot about it, yes. but what exactly does this mean? If you are a Badkar. What exactly are your duties? If you are a munkar, what exactly are your rights? I hope you all found this show today very informative. As I always say, do get back to us with your feedback. If you all have any questions you all would like to cover, any questions you all would like us to ask our lawyers, or even if you all want us to cover a specific topic, please message us on the number you see below. You can WhatsApp us also on the number below. You can email us on the email ID you see below. Till then, it's me, Andrea D'Souza from our team at Kaido saying thank you.